Hey, what's going on? It's Bill Burr, and it's time for the Monday Morning Podcast for Monday, August 1st. Oh, Jesus! 2019, what's going on? How are you? You're at work, and you know what? Everybody's bumming you out today because it's August 1st, and everybody's going to be telling you, everybody's going to be telling you, oh, my God, where did the summer go? I can't believe the fucking summer's over. This fucking summer goes to, like, September 20th. It's only half over. It started third week of June. Okay, you're in the you're in the dog days of summer. It's just like the fucking baseball season, except a couple weeks shorter. All right. So all those people who go, oh my god, you cannot wear white after Labor Day. Fuck them. Just be like, it's still summertime, bitch. All right, till September twenty. If. Um. All right, so fucking wipe that gloomy look off your face. You got plenty of time left. And with global warming, I mean, shit, it probably technically, as far as temperature goes, temperature-wise, it probably goes until October 18th. And um, enjoy these days. Enjoy these extra days of summer before it's summer all the time and before summer is actually winter and summer becomes hell's fire. Sorry. Um, I am the god of hell's fire. Remember that fucking weird video from the 60s? You know, when everyone was freaking out, the adults, like, you got to admit, though, the, if any adults had a right to freak out, it was the, uh, the parents of baby boomers. Just like how much shit changed from the 1940s. When they were out fighting a war, boop a dap a doop a doop a doop a doop a doop right? They were like the greatest generation ever. Their parents went through the Depression and all that. And the whole time they were growing up, what did they say? They're, they're, the parents of the greatest generation, they were all like, we went through the Depression. Maybe they didn't. I don't give a shit. It just works out for me. So then what the fucking, the greatest generation, the greatest generation of warriors, the worst generation of parents. Hey, don't get me wrong. They could fight a war. They could fight a world war. But I'll tell you, those fucking people, they must have spared the rod and spoiled the child. Because all of a sudden, the 60s come around, and everybody's just like, well, hey, man, like, why do I have to have my dick in my underwear, man? Why can't I, like, run across the field with my hairy ass, man? Right? Right? And then the chicks were just like, well, you can take your fucking dick out that I can have my tits flopping around as I walk down the street, right? Sorry, I I know I'm blowing through the 60s, but this is essentially what happened, right? It came in with John Kennedy and his beautiful wife, uh, what's her name there, Mrs. Kennedy. And, uh, (laughs) you know, she was a fashion plate. I tell you, if she knew any, you know, if if a young Michelle Obama was around, she could have told her to do a fucking arena tour. You're wearing a dress. You look great. Get out there and sell some tickets. Um, I'll have somebody else write the book. You just say stuff over somebody's shoulder and have them fucking tight. Um, I am so sick of super famous, super busy people acting like they wrote a book. It's just enough. For, you didn't write a book. You don't have fucking time to write a book. You're too busy doing all the other shit in your meetings for your fucking vitamin water that has your face on it fuck out of here you sat down and wrote a book like you're Ernest Hemingway sitting there with the demons in your head drinking yourself to death get the fuck out of here you have your own basketball team your own clothing line you run a jet airline and now you wrote a book how do you find the time well I have other people do shit for me I delegate all right I have a meeting I sit there and I listen to people. I stare at everybody for a three one thousand count with one eyebrow up. One one thousand, two one thousand, three one thousand. Then I look at somebody else. I put the one eyebrow down. I put the other one up. Four one thousand, five one thousand, six one thousand. Fuck it. Go to seven. Seven one thousand. Then I go to somebody else. Then the meeting ends and I just quietly sit there. I shake my head. And I sit real still like Hitler right before a speech. Then I stand up and I fucking go ballistic. I take it to 10 and they all walk out of there shaking, scared to death. And I don't even know what the fuck they said, right? That's how I run a business. Um, no, that, you know what that was? That was somebody who doesn't know how to make a billion dollars 
turning someone who does into a cartoon. These people work very hard. Do you know how hard it is to get to a level, if you started on your own, to earn a billion dollars, to have your own island and fuck miners on it? I mean, that is difficult. They were actually saying that fucking Epstein, Epstein guy would literally sit with fucking scientists talking about how he wanted to make superhumans and somehow superhumans, he was fascinated with like, uh, like genetic traits. Does this all sound familiar? It should. <laughs> and his last name's Epstein, Epstein or whatever. I'm assuming he's Jewish. I mean, that's so fucked up that he would get into the same shit. That's like Superman getting into some Lex Luthor, or is it Luger? Whatever the fuck, the bald guy. The guy looks like me, but has a little more pigment. Mean Mr. Clean. Um, he gets involved in the exact same shit. And anyways, and what was great, like all people who want to make a, a, whatever you call it, a master race or a group of superhumans, what it all comes down to is it always comes back to the jizz in their balls. You know, it's just like, if I was a scientist, you just got to be, well, actually, if I was on somebody's island and they started talking about that, you got to be sitting there going immediately as you're sitting there in your long fucking white lab coat, panicking, am I ever going to get off this island? You know, did I just walk into the beginning of a Bruce Lee movie? And if I did, when is he getting here? And why are there no guns on the island? Yeah, you're in a kung fu movie. All right, Carradine's got to show up with his bastardized white version of uh, the martial arts. You know, he actually, to be honest with you, I feel like he's the father of uh, mixed martial arts. Just hear me out. (laughs) Is it David Carradine? I want to make sure I got the right one here. You got the right one, baby. Uh Uh-huh. Let's see. Remember when he did that fucking commercial? That's back in... Ray Charles did the fucking Pepsi commercial. You get, you didn't think he was selling out because he was so old, right? David Carradine. Yeah, that was it. David Carradine, right? He was the father of mixed martial arts because he combined um, Asian martial arts with being white, getting on television, and wrestling because it was like not real fights. Although he probably didn't get hurt, hurt as much. Okay, so that, that, there's a mix right there. That's a mashup, you know? And then I just think everybody else, actually the first mixed martial artist, according to uh, people who know how to fight, which would not be me, they say is Bruce Lee, right? He was the guy. And then he came over here and he started teaching Whitey all, all the fucking, all the kicks and shit, right? That's the way I heard it. I heard it through Western eyes. Um, oh, what is that song? She's got, she's got fucking, she's got better Davis eyes, right? He's got fucking Western eyes. You know, if I actually had any sort of produce production on this podcast, whenever I would start talking about history, that's what it'd be. It'd be a cover of Betty Davis eyes, except uh, old Freckles has Western eyes or so. Somehow the syllables work out. Um, the way I was taught by another white person about mix about martial arts which did not come came all it all came from asia now i know down in brazil the gracie family tries to act like they they came up with that tumbling fumbling rumbling bumbling stumbling style right or somehow you're on your back and you can beat the shit out of somebody all right according to other people i don't know where the fuck it came from you know what i love it's fighting came from everywhere we're human beings that's what we do right isn't this amazing to just listen to somebody with absolutely no facts other than piecing together conversations from shit he heard people say at a bar. So anyways, I'm just going to go with this shit, okay? I'm going to say it confidently and reassuringly and whatever the third word is that means confidence, all right? Braggadociously. He came from Asia because allegedly, you know, they were shorter than we were and they knew we were coming because they saw what the fuck we'd been doing, Right? And they were saying, listen, we're, gonna be, we're not going to be in the same weight class. We can't have a bunch of fucking welterweights and fucking flyweights here fighting heavyweights and super heavyweights because these people are not going to stop eating, okay? So we need to learn how to fuck them up with our feet and our hands, okay? They're going macho. They only use hands. They say using your feet is for sissies, 
All right? That's what they're saying. Well, wait till they check out my fucking spinning heel kick. All right? As I'm sitting here having a little something to eat, and all of a sudden I stand up and fucking start spinning like a top, knocking their fucking Chris Ruth's, Ruth Chris's fucking heads across the fucking room, right? And then they had like this mafia thing where you keep your fucking mouth shut. Everybody, you don't fucking say shit. You don't tell anybody how we do this shit, all right? And then somebody probably was in the back, well, what about the person you just beat the shit out of? I mean, they're going to see, you know, they're going to kind of see some of the style when they get their fucking ass kicked. And then the person, well, actually, if you knock them out, they're going to forget the previous minute of their life before getting knocked out. So they're not going to remember what the fuck happened. I'm like, all right. And that's the way it was. And then Bruce Lee came along. Right. And he fucking combined all the disciplines because that was nothing. There was a bunch of different like ours is the best. It's like Italians with fucking, you know, food. You know, you go over to Italy, they're like the next town over. They don't know how to make a fucking gabagool, whatever the fuck they do over there. Why, the reason why their food's so good. They were doing that with martial arts. Like Asians are the Italians of fucking martial arts, except it's not food, it's fighting. Jesus, I'm in deep here. So, <laughs> so what's his face? Bruce Lee was a foodie. And he's like, well, hey, man, like I want to try all kinds of food, man. And he did. He ate all the food. Somehow he still had abs. Because the I don't know, their food's better. They have seaweed in their diet over there. I don't know. I don't know what it is. There's always something. Americans, we always have to have say there's some sort of secret ingredient rather than they they burn as many calories as they eat every day. For some reason, the logic of that never works. With Italians, they were like, oh, the Mediterranean diet. They got fucking olive oil in their diet. That's why they're so skinny. Oh, the Asians, uh, there's a lot of fish. A lot of seaweed. It's like, no, no. You're going to Krispy Kreme and you're eating donuts. That's the fucking problem. Yeah, but I had olive oil on my pasta. Shut up. All right, so then Bruce Lee comes over here and not only has he combined all of them, you know, and I guess over in Asia they had like a fucking clan, clannish version brown shirt version of the martial arts where there should be no mixes, right? And our, our fucking, our way of doing it is the divine way and the God of fucking f- feet kicking, right? He thinks that we're the smartest, although he made us all, you know, the typical fucking religious shit. And uh, Bruce Lee was like, nay, nay, man, I'm like a baby boomer, man, even though I'm from Asia. Was he from Asia or from Seattle? I can't remember. Doesn't matter. There's no facts on this. All right, you guys go watch your history of fucking whatever. You listen to those podcasts. All those pretentious cunts who look up shit. You know what I mean? I love people who just look up shit and then just say it to you like they fucking discovered it. I get it. You like to read things that aren't exciting. You know? You're not like me. I, I, like, I like to take a little ride. I don't like that dry reading. You know? Physics, geometry. I'm not into that. You know, Ken Stabler writes a fucking biography. I'm all over it. Fucking all over it. I would rather listen to Ken Stabler telling me a story about crushing a 12-pack outside of a fucking carnival. You know, hitting on chicks and taking them out on his fucking boat than than I would understand. Oh, that's actually not true. Because you know what I've been into lately? Bridges. Okay. And I'm not talking about Jeff. I'm not talking Bo. I'm not even talking Burgess Meredith. I'm talking about actual suspension bridges and the physics of it, how they work. I understand how a suspension bridge works, but that one that has the arch that starts underneath the road and then goes up and over it, that's the one that fascinates me. Seems like a lot of extra metal, you know. Actually, wait, I think I understand. I think I, I can look at it and figure it out. But let's get back to the history of martial arts. So then... Bruce Lee, the first Asian baby boomer. We're going to say he came over from, from uh, I know he was Chinese. I, I do know that. Because he had a line where he talked, he beats the shit out of some Japanese dude in a movie. And he said, by the way, I'm not an animal. Right? Because the Japanese evidently are the white people of Asia, where they feel like they are superior to everybody else. Okay? And they're also the ones that try to fucking take everybody over. You know what I mean? 
granted, they're on that little island, you know. They fucked themselves, you know, banged their way out of no more land. Straighten all the fucking rivers. I mean, they're bored shitless. I mean, eventually, when, when people start straightening their own rivers, you got to think at some point, these people are going to attack us because they are bored out of their minds. All right? So they used to always say that the Chinese, back in the day, they used to say that they, they, they weren't as good as them. They were animals and all that. So I guess it was a movie, Bruce Lee beat the shit out of this fucking Japanese guy. And he goes, by the way, I'm not an animal. And when that debuted in uh, wherever they showed it in China, the fucking place went standing ovation right there. See, I do know a little bit because I did read this thing on Bruce Lee. But other than that, I'm just, you know, trying, I'm trying to remember some shit people told me in a bar. So anyways, he fucking comes over here and he fucking teaches everybody, you know, how to do the fist of fury, you know, the feet of furiousness. And uh, everybody got all pissed off and then they, they whacked him. Isn't that what happened? You know what I'm trying to say? It was last night I watched something on the 1960s. On PBS. Oh, the fucking channel that all the Republicans hate. (laughs) The fucking channel out there. I don't understand why they don't have a fucking conservative PBS. Instead of those fucking assholes whining. Oh, how much is this going to cost? If that fucking thing was saying some shit that you assholes enjoyed on the other side, right? You would be all over it. We need this. We need this for our children. I actually would say... Then no matter how conservative you are, you would actually enjoy this thing that I watched last night. I think it was called The Death of the 60s, the day the 1960s died or something like that. And it just combined all the events that were going on, Nixon, Vietnam, and Kent State. And um, I got to tell you, man, the shit that those fucking students were doing was in like you would get life in jail now. Life in prison. They, they fucking, like, there was a National Guard reserve building, and Kent State students just lit it on fire. It was a raging fucking fire. They lit the fucking thing up. An absolute fucking inferno. The fire department showed up. They attacked the firemen and took knives out and were trying to cut their hoses. Can you imagine doing that now post 9-11? I, I don't even know where, you know. So, the National Guard shows up. I'm really slow. I'm fucking blowing through all this. They're like fucking 300 feet, 300, yard, 300 yards away. Something fucking ridiculous. They just fire into the crowd. They kill four kids. This is what kills me. I didn't realize this. First of all, one kid got paralyzed. They don't bring that person up ever. That person does not have a Wikipedia page, you know. I don't fucking get that. Oh, you didn't die, so nobody gives a shit. And then two of the kids were just walking to class. They weren't even part of, of the, uh, the protest. They were like, these kids are fucking nuts or whatever. And they're just going to class. And they got fucking whacked. And you have to watch this documentary. Like, Nixon was so fucking, like, bummed out. Actually, it was a human moment on the guy. Like, he actually stayed up all night in the White House and decided to go out to the Lincoln Memorial because he thought it was beautiful at night. Now, I don't know how he got in his chauffeur car. This is back when I think they, they, they had like a fucking, all they had was the fence around the White House. You know, there wasn't all those fucking guards or any of that shit. Because I remember going to D.C. in the early 80s. You could walk right up to that fence. I mean, there was security and shit, but it wasn't as visible. There wasn't all the Jersey barriers and all that shit that they have down there. Now, um, and he went out there and just wandered into the crowd and started talking to people. And they were all fucking freaked out. Like, it's the fucking president, man. And he was standing there in his suit and they were sitting there in their hippie fucking protest shit. Um, you got to see this thing. It's done so well that both sides, you see how they were wrong and both sides, you see how they were right. And then you also see... The shit that fucking people are saying is so much like they're saying right now. Um, Whereas before 9-11 and all this bullshit, if you were to watch it, you'd be like, wow, that's America was crazy back then. Um, But ever since like, you know, 9-11, we've just been fucking screaming at each other and shit. So after Kent State, they were talking to some conservative people and they said, what'd you think? And, And they were like, I thought they got what they deserved. It was actually a woman. She's like, I thought they got what they deserved. I'm just mad they didn't kill more of them. (laughs) 
said that on TV. And that's back when you could say it on TV. Somebody saw it and like, what the fuck did that bitch just say? And then that was it. She was gone. You could barely remember what she looked like. You didn't have a VCR. You didn't have a DVR recorder. There was nobody to take the clip and put it online and then find her on social media and shame the shit out of her. You could go on national fucking television after fucking the National Guard shot unarmed students and say, I'm only sad they didn't kill more of them, and then go to work the next day. And not have a fucking worry. Like, you almost forgot you even said it. Your husband comes home. Thought you are going to have dinner on the fucking table. I'm sorry. Ah! Right? What the fuck did you do today? Oh, I went shopping. Um... Got some new boots. Bought a new necklace, genuine white, white gold. And there was something else I can't remember what. Somebody asked me something. There may or may not have been a microphone in a, in a, in a camera. Um, but I'll say, like, what the students were doing was fucking nuts. What the government do, was doing was the same old shit they're always doing. You know, I think a little bit, it was a little bit different with Vietnam because I think, I think they definitely had a concern about the spread of communism. I definitely think that that was a legit fucking thing. I don't think it was just a straight up land grab, like, you know, natural resource because there wasn't really any oil there as far as I know, right? I'm just fucking cynical as fucking hell. I just think corporations decide, you know, the way the whole fucking thing is set up. And these fucking politicians are paid way too less money. They are so fu- they are so underpaid and they are set up to be bribed. So the only way that the regular person can get a politician to do what they want is we would somehow have to pool all of our money and make a huge fucking donation as a group. And then we become a special interest group and then we go off the rails, man. Um, anyway, I, I'm, I don't even know what the fuck I'm talking about. You guys should definitely, like, check it out. But I, I was astounded at the behavior of um, the students, the level that they took it to. And I'm not saying that what the people on the other side in control were right, but they were doing what they always did. I just didn't know you could go that fucking hard. Um, but it caused so many fucking people on the other side to get so fucking mad at these college kids. I mean, they went into town one day and they had a protest screaming, you know, like provoking all these townspeople who were like conservative and didn't like the people at Kent State. And they went down, they broke a bunch of storefront windows. Uh, They kind of provoked some sort of violent response. Now, obviously, they didn't know it was going to go to that fucking level. But um, it's really fascinating to watch because all I've ever seen is just like and National Guards came in and they killed four students. I'm like, what the fuck? But when you see what they were doing, you see, you know, the fucking frying pan into the fire, the shit that people were doing, how it got up to that. And I got to tell you, when you watch this thing, you will not believe the shit that people are saying that sounds exactly how people talk about politics today. A very extreme, extreme time. So I highly recommend it. Let me get the fucking name of it for you. You got to watch it because obviously um, the way I just described it was probably fucking horrific. Let me see here. Uh, The death of the 60s PBS. The day the 60s died. Oh, look at that. You You can watch it online. You're at work. You're not working. Who's kidding? Who? All the fucking manufacturing that's been sent out of the country. You're not going to lose a digit if you press play on this. Go ahead. Full episode. The day the 60s died. Uh, Okay. The day the 60s dies chronicles May 1970, the month in which four students were shot dead in Kent State. The mayhem that followed has been called the most divisive moment in American history since the Civil War. From college camps to jungles. Oh, they were talking about them fighting in Cambodia, the Nixon White House. The, what I really liked about it is, um, and what's missing in so many documentaries today, is I just thought they presented the material. And I am a fan of anything that 
will uh, it humanized the students and it also made them look like assholes. It humanized Nixon and also made people in power look like assholes. So at that point, I'm like, all right. Now what you're showing me is is essentially people where it's like, you know, here's I had a good day here. I did a good thing over here. I did a bad thing. And then that's, you know, as opposed to be like this person did this bad thing. That is what they are. That is all they are. You know, it's like that joke I do in my act about O.J. Simpson. Okay, yes, he killed two people. He also won a Heisman Trophy. I mean, let's try to tell the whole story here. Um, Okay, allegedly. No, he was acquitted. I don't know. I don't know what the fuck to tell you. Can I read a little advertising here? All right. Um, Oh, by the way, was I right about Red Sox and Yankees? Was I right? Look what happened. Oh, my God. They picked up fucking two, three games, and then Red Sox drop a couple. Yankees win a couple. We're right back up to fucking nine, ten games out. Um, No reason to panic. No reason to panic unless you're trying to sell newspapers. All right. Butcher's Box, everybody. Uh, My favorite. Right now, Butcher Box is offering juicy, flavorful, grill-ready, 100% grass-fed beef burgers. Perfect for any summer cookout. Summer. When does the summer end, everybody? Let's have the official date for every cunt who goes, can you believe it's fucking August? Last day of summer 2019 is Monday, September 23rd. It goes from June 21st to Monday, September 23rd. So don't let any cunt ever tell you that it's fucking half over. It's not half over. You still got another week before it's half over. (laughs) Or it's over. They say it's over. It's not over. You're into like week three of the football season. All right. Butcher box. Ready to go. Third of a pound patties. You don't even have to turn them into patties. They did it for you, you lazy, meaty hand son of a bee. That can be simply tossed on the grill for an easy weeknight meal. Or doctored up, zhuzhed, as some people say, to create a show-stopping Bacon cheeseburger for the neighborhood barbecue. That's right. Neighbors show up. You throw the bacon on. You know, you start showing off. If we show up, we're going to show out. What is that song? Stupid, um, <laughs> Burger Box sources their pure, wild, sustainably harvest salmon from Bristol Bay, Alaska. These people risk their fucking lives. In front of grizzly bears. Right? Is a grizzly bears right or to grab it? Some guy goes, I'll take that and fucking snatches it right out. You know, bears, they're not that fucking smart. They're not that stupid either. And they're a lot faster than you. Okay, so you have a fucking moment. You gotta look another wild animal in the eye. You just you know say what you want about wild animals. They will question themselves. Cause there's no there's no you're a bitch in fucking the wild. Okay, I have seen Every animal of prey turn tail and fucking run and not even remotely get embarrassed. Right? I'm going to eat this fucking giraffe. One kick to the face. Hey, fuck this shit. They run away. They don't give a fuck. Then they sit down like, all right, maybe I'll go after a gazelle. They don't give a fuck. That's why they're successful. That's why they're the top of the food chain. They don't pack it in. Take a little breather before they try to kill something else. Anyways, they've partnered with fishermen who uphold strict fishing and handling practices to guarantee the highest quality. Oh, these are Hasidic people fishing. This is kosher fucking salmon. This is what this is sounding like. Maybe they're not Hasidic. Maybe just, you know, the spray from the water made these people's hair get a little curlier. People got confused. Uh, My favorite is... The price is just $129 a month, which works out to less. How many times has that happened to somebody down south? Okay, they just had a type of hair. They went out fishing and all of a sudden it got a little wet and it curled up a little bit. And then somebody, I didn't know I was fishing with someone who was Jewish. And then it becomes a big fucking fight. You got to be careful out there, people. Um, They've partnered with fishermen who uphold strict fishing and handling practices to guarantee the highest quality. My favorite is the price is just... My, oh, my favorite is, I'm supposed to say it there. <laughs> oh, dot, dot, dot. This is supposed to be dramatic. My favorite is the uh, Heritage Bread Pork. You guys know this stuff. It's the best pork chop I've ever made at home. Absolutely delicious. My mouth waters literally when I read the copy. The price is just $129, uh, $129 a month, which works out to less than $6 a meal, and shipping is free nationwide. 
besides Alaska and Hawaii. And then you also don't have to go to the supermarket all the fucking time. All right, you got your meat all frozen in the uh, freezer there. Right now, new members get, will get six burgers for free in every box until October 15th. Get summer's best offer before it expires. Yeah, look at that. They're fucking fronting your whole barbecue. Um, for $20, if you did it every other week, you could have 12 people over, and all the first burgers are on Butcher Box. I mean, come on. Everyone would love you. Everyone would love you. For $20 off your first box and six burgers for free in every box all summer long until October 15th, go to butcherbox.com slash burr or enter the promo code B-U-R-R. Um, that's $20 off your first box and six burgers for free in every box all summer long until October 15th. Go to butcherbox.com or enter promo code burr. All right, Manscaped. All right. Support for Monday Morning Podcast comes from Manscaped, who is number one in men's below-the-belt grooming. Manscaped offers precision-engineered tools for your family jewels. Exactly. It's gotta be, you gotta be on, uh, you got to be on high alert when you go downtown there, right? Uh, we're, going, we're going to the forbidden zone. Uh, host to talk about a time when he hurt his balls. I did it last week. I did it last week with my, I had a new fucking shaver. That I bought, you know, for my fucking fireman uh, mustache here. And when I went downtown, uh, Jesus Christ. Old freaking frack. One of them almost fucking left the sack there. Um, oh, that's the worst. Then every time you go to take a shower, right? The soap hits your fucking cut up ball bag. You start screaming in the shower. Your wife's going, what are you, what are you doing in there? It's like, oh, I, did I mention? I, I, Jason Voorhees came back onto my fucking nutsack. All right, that's why Manscaped has redesigned the electric trimmer. Their Lawn Mower 2.0 has proprietary skin-safe technology, so this trimmer won't nick or snag your nuts. Can you imagine the broke college students that had to go in and try it out and be like, ah, still not there? Still not there. Not quite working. Manscaped accidents are finally a thing of the past. And don't use the same trimmer on your face as you're using on your balls. That's just nasty. Manscaped also has the crop preserver and anti-chafing ball deodorant and moisturizer. You already put deodorant on your armpits. Why are you not putting deodorant on the smelliest part of your body? I don't understand smelly nuts. I just don't understand them. You take a shower. I don't have that fucking problem. All right. My nuts stay high and dry. <laughs> Some people are sweaters. It's what it is. They put on a pair of fucking boxers and all of a sudden, you know, it's like their nuts are trying to cut weight for a fight. Uh, get 20% off plus free shipping with the code Burr at manscapes.com. Always use the right tools for the job. Your balls will thank you. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code Burr at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use the promo code Burr. Uh, oh, look who's here. Do, 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 me undies, me undies. No more cutting your nuts. Do, 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 me undies, me undies. It shaves around the fucking ruts. We don't care how wrinkly it is. It'll go so smooth, you might jizz. You got on me undies and they feel good for down there with your sweaty nuts. Get ball deodorant. Me undies is here to change your underwear. Not literally, but it's here to change the way you think about it. Hmm. They believe undies shouldn't take themselves too seriously. MeUndies also believes that every woman should have the freedom to wear whatever cut they want and whatever color they want and whatever size they want. So, ladies, uh, rejoice. The Feel Free Collection is here. MeUndies size tested, MeUndies size tested these five new silhouettes on every body type. Oh, my God. That's one of the hardest words to spell in the English language. Silhouette. You would think it was S-I-L-L-O-W-E-T-T-E. -T -T no, S-I-L-H-O-U-E-T-T-E-S. Sil-ho-ets. On every body type. Uh, with an ultra-soft featherlight waistband that provides zero restriction. These undies will be the best thing that has ever been put on your body. Offered in sizes extra small to 4XL. To plus size is what you're supposed to say. All right, MeUndies offers a flexible membership that has styles for both men, women, matching your boo with everything, e even your dog. 
Oh, matching your boo and even your dog. Now, you're talking about my dick there? Because these guys get a little randy here, and they're reads that you're talking about an actual dog. MeUndies has a great offer for my listeners. For any first-time purchasers, you get 15% off free shipping. This is a no-brainer, especially because they have a 100% satisfaction guarantee. To get your 15% off your first pair of free shipping and 100% satisfaction guarantee, go to MeUndies.com slash Burr. That's MeUndies.com slash Burr. All right, where are we? Because old Freckles is traveling today. I'm going up to Boston. I'm doing a benefit for the Travis Roy Foundation at the Wilbur. It is sold out. Thank you to everybody um, who's coming down. There will be a meet and greet for uh, some of the people about the VIP tickets. Charlie McAvoy is going to be there from the Bruins along with some other people. Of course, Travis Roy. This is something I've wanted to be involved in for a long time. Uh, very excited to get up there and uh, be doing my jokes, working uh, with some old Boston friends of mine, some new Boston comics that I, I'm not familiar with, but I'm very excited. So that's it. Please enjoy the music here. The transition into the uh, second half of this podcast. If you're new to the podcast, we have a Greatest Hits Thursday afternoon podcast from uh, Thursday afternoon just before Friday, Monday morning podcast from uh, last week or 10 years ago. I have no idea. All right. Have a great weekend, you cunts. going on it's bill burn it's the monday morning podcast for monday august 1st oh my god stacy where is this summer going 2011 um if you hear a sound in the background that sounds like a weed whacker that's because that's exactly what it is because i am recording the monday morning podcast on monday morning 10 39 west coast time which for most of you it's uh, all the way into the afternoon, so I apologize for being uh, being a little bit tardy, but uh, I was flying back from Canada yesterday. Oh, Canada, we have homeless people too, and a bunch of drug addicts, and I saw a story about a random stabbing. I don't fucking know why Michael Moore makes that place seem so fucking nice. I know the rest of the song go. It's from far and wide. Oh, Canada, it looks like Idaho. Go fuck yourselves. You're not as happy as that fat bearded cunt says you are. The only difference between your place and fucking Boise, Idaho, is you know what a dasher is. Yeah, yeah, da, da, go fuck yourself, Adam Maple Leaf. Um, I had a great time up there. I was doing the uh, Montreal Comedy Festival. Je m'appelle Guillaume, comment allez-vous? Très bien, oui, yeah. Um, I had an awesome time, and I ate right. I worked out. And uh, for one of the first times ever, I lost a couple of pounds while on the road. Why, you ask? Because I finally figured out how to eat on the road. Any of you guys out there? Any of you guys out there salesmen? You know, kiss the wife and family goodbye. You take off on the road. You become that other guy. Start banging some skanks, right? Take the wedding ring off. You know, you push it through your right ear and you go out and blow somebody in a steam room. <laughs> What the fuck? Um, 
Anyway, sorry. I'm a little punch drunk. I didn't get a lot of sleep yesterday, and then I Tylenol PM'd myself. You know, all drugged out. In a nice, deep slumber. And all of a sudden, my stupid dog starts waking me up. My dog absolutely fucking went from hating the crate to loving the crate, and now it fucking hates it again. I can't figure it. It keeps trying to dig its way out of the thing. And so I was going, hey, Cleo, knock it off. Knock it off. Then I try to go back to sleep. 627. Cleo, hey, knock it off. Go back to sleep. 628. Hey, the fuck is wrong with you? Right? All this shit I shouldn't be doing. I'm supposed to be be remaining calm so the dog will mirror my calmness. You know, meanwhile, Nia's just sleeping. She just keeps going like, I'm trying to sleep. You know, like, all this is one of these classic examples where now it's my fucking dog. So basically, you know, my temper, it gets all the way to the point where the 90th time she does it, I'm like, hey, fucking cut the shit, right? Which, of course, just makes the dog more fucking nervous and wants to do it even more. So finally, Nia wakes up like, she gets up and she goes over there and she sits down next to the cage, totally chill. Gets the dog to fucking lay down. And she just stayed there with it till it was totally chill. And then she closed the fucking door and then the thing was fine. See? And that right there is why women should not be in the workforce. <laughs> I'm, I'm fucking serious about that. We fucked up letting them out of the kitchen and in the bedrooms. That's where they belong. Effortless can make a sandwich in two seconds. They just pretend they don't know how to do it now because they want to walk around in their little Nancy Reagan power suit. Ooh, I'm fucking doing shit too. What are you doing, lady? Lady, what are you doing? What did you do? You went out and got yourself a fucking cubicle? That's what you did. You're not doing anything. You just went out and got a stupid job just like me. Why couldn't you just been happy with what you had? You couldn't stay home and do what you were naturally good at. You were just so fucking convinced that I had it better that you had to go out there and see what a cubicle was like. Well, let me ask you, how are you enjoying it? You didn't count on the fact that most guys aren't running their own business. Most guys are not in charge of their own destiny. Most guys work for a corporation and have to pick up and move to wherever the fuck they tell them to move. What about that appeal to you, sweetie? Huh? I just like dressing up. I I just wanted to feel like I had some place to go. That's actually Guy's fault. That whole women's lib movement was Guy's fault because they have to come home and our fucking egos just would not allow us to come home and just say, you know, I'm just a cog in the fucking wheel. I'm not running shit. The amount of times I think of killing myself during the fucking workday is off the charts, and the only reason why I don't is because I have you and these wonderful kids to come home to. But if I didn't have you guys, that'd be it. I'd fucking stick my face in the Xerox machine till I got face cancer. That's what the fuck I would have done. Face cancer, one of the number one killers of accountants across America. So anyways, she's right there. Nia's never been a mom. Right there, she knew exactly what to do to calm the fucking dog down. All right? You're talking a different species, and she knew what to do. What do I do? I do what guys do. I start off going, hey, cut the shit, you know, which escalates to, dude, I'm fucking warning you. And then the next thing you know, next thing you know, you're having two fucking wars at the same time, bankrupting the company, the company, the country. Do you know I barely paid attention? Um... No, let's, let's finish that point. That's why I really believe. I think women should stay at home and raise kids. They're fucking great at it. You ever wonder why there's such a, a bunch of cunty kids running around out there? That's because their moms were at work when they could have been at home. You know, raising them how they're like naturally. The same way guys are naturally wired to just pick up heavy shit. They're naturally wired to be nurturing and they're fucking great at it. 
And as much as I'm, I'm really being chauvinistic here and everything, be deliberately over the top to make it funny, I actually do believe it on a lot of levels. That if you could somehow have your fucking broad stay home during critical years of your kids' lives, I think it's way better for them. Instead of having a nanny or sticking them in one, one of those germ fest places, you know, drop them off at daycare. Ugh, bunch of snot-nosed kids running around. I don't know. You know? Was that wrong? Was it wrong to, to think those things? I'll tell you what's funny is that that is considered chauvinistic, that you actually say that women are great mothers and that they make a great sandwich. <laughs> it just comes off as unbelievably insulting to them. You know? Stuff you're just naturally good at. I'll tell you right now, if you're a woman and you're listening right now and you can't make a good sandwich, there's something wrong with you. And you really ought to be questioning your entire womanhood, all of it. I don't think you're worthy. Um, All right. I think that's good enough to get some emails next week. Um, Anyways, this is the Monday morning podcast for uh, Monday, August 1st. And, uh, yeah, I was up at the Montreal Comedy Festival this week doing Cheat Live with uh, Robert Kelly and Joe DeRosa, the teen idol sensation from the Opie and Anthony program. We were up there doing a uh, a show about infidelity, talking about all these poor bastards who accomplish all these things in life, right? And one fucking skank comes around and just worms their way into the situation, and then everybody just questions. They just question the guy. They don't question the skank, you know? That's another reason why guys are so fucking great why it's great to be a guy is because when we fuck up, people just think it's funny. They don't give a shit. There's no 1-800 numbers that we can call. When women get, you know, fucked up or fucked up shit happens to them, you know, they, they start a group. This is ridiculous. This stuff keeps happening. We need to make it illegal. I want to tee off 10 feet in front of you. Make it easier. Hold the door. Buy me a drink. You know, that's why you're where you're at, sweetheart. What the fuck am I doing on this podcast? Why am I trashing the ladies? Jesus Christ. It's almost as if I didn't look at the notes for uh, (laughs) the podcast this week, so I'm picking an easy target. Oh, I was trying to say, what a great time I had up in Montreal. Oh, my God. Some OMG, LOL. Some beautiful women up there, absolutely gorgeous women. And they speak French, which makes them even more exotic. But I got to tell you, um, Montreal, for as beautiful as the women are, I've never seen so many cankles in all my life. There are a lot of fucking skinny elephant legs walking around up there, if you know what I mean. Um, but other than that, it's a, it's a great city. And uh, I went all around it. I kept going to the Parc du Royal, which for some reason they were calling it a mountain, even though it was, it's just a big hill. They call it a mountain. You know, the French. They're really fucking dramatic um, as they hold the cigarette by the taint when they go to smoke it with their berets and their striped shirts, playing that little fucking squeeze box. Um, I never saw any of that the whole week. And uh, I went hiking four out of the five days. Uh, I did the stairs. Um, and then I ate, I ate right. I ate right. I stayed away from the uh, the buffets and all that bullshit. I ate right. I came home, and I feel fucking great. Um, so anyways, let's talk about the comedy festival. Um, I did the Nerdist podcast. Look for that uh, with Chris Hardwick and uh, Reggie Watts, who I'm going to recommend another one is YouTube videos. In general, just look up Reggie Watts. Um, W-A-T-T-S, if you ever get a chance to see the guy, just absolute fucking genius. I never say that, and um, you got to see this guy. Um, so that's my YouTube video of the week because we don't have too many this week. Just just go on YouTube, go to the search engine, and then you type in Reggie Watts, and then you take two fingers, not one. You hit two two fingers, and you hit the return button to make sure it goes through, and just watch his fucking videos. Um why the, are the levels too low again? Come on, man. 
Get up there. There we go. There we go. So anyways, um, yeah, me, Robert Kelly, and Joe DeRosa, we did, uh, we did a show at this place, uh, Cleopatra, right across the street from Club Soda. And uh, we were just talking about, you know, cheating on girlfriends and guys fucking around on their wives. It was basically the overall theme of the story. We all did 20 minutes on the subject, and we did it in this bar, uh, Cleopatra, which was um, actually a tranny bar. <laughs> So it was kind of perfect. I don't know why they picked that venue, but it was perfect. It was a great stage, and they had the dry ice machine going, and we were all talking about all the perverted shit that we've done in our lives. You know, I was talking about gold digging whores. Bobby was talking about being married. DeRosa was talking about being the fucking uh, the swinger that he is. And uh, it was great. And then the waitresses, like two out of three of them, I think were actually transvestites. So needless to say, it was a fucking awesome show. Um, Really was great. And uh, we didn't step on each other's toes, even though we were all talking about the same subject. And um, I don't know if I've announced this yet, but it's it's all part of it's leading up to uh, me, Joe and, and Bobby. We're all writing a book. And uh, it's going to be coming out, I believe, in February of next year. And our short film, um, Cheat, is is going to be part of, if you buy the book, you're actually going to be able to get a copy of it. So all you people out there who are saying, well, you're not, it's not in a film festival where I can see it. It's going to be in a book. Uh, the book will be in bookstores, believe it or not. There's a lot of rumors on TV that it's going to be uh, it's going to be at a butcher shop. It isn't. It's going to be at a bookstore. You can buy it, bring it out to any one of our shows. We'll sign them for you. And uh, and that is it. That is it. So I'm in a great mood, everybody. You probably are wondering why. Why are you in such a great mood? Um, Because last night, Breaking Bad. All right. The the breakout star from the hit show Glee did a little little uh, had a little scene on it. Did any, any of you guys watch it? I actually got a bunch of emails and everyone was complimentary of my acting. Thank God. And, uh, yeah, I still can't believe I got to be on it. We had a little party here last night, brought a bunch of people over, and I actually was able to sit down and watch it. And I thought it, I thought it looked all right. Am I being arrogant? I, th- I thought, it looked, uh, thought it looked pretty good. My big fucking red-bearded face, I thought it looked all right. So I want to thank everyone who, uh, who said all the nice stuff. You know, this podcast is going to suck this week because I just had a great week. I had a great time at the Montreal Comedy Festival. Nothing bad happened. Oh, wait a minute. I know what happened. Bobby Kelly was doing this fucking documentary with this guy who's only eaten five foods his entire life. Like hamburger, bacon, chicken, Brussels sprouts, and like bananas. Something fucked up like that. So he has like this phobia of other foods. The textures of them, the smell of them, and they make them gag if uh, if he tries them. So obviously it's fucking with his social life. He tries to go out with a woman or whatever, and she suggests sushi, and he can't go. And then he's got to tell her, and he starts dry heaving on the date. And obviously there's no second date. Dry heaving for all you youngsters out there. That's something you might want to avoid on a first date. If any way, any way you can avoid going Ugh! on a first date. That would probably be a good thing. So anyways, long story short, Bobby goes, all right, so he's never had pork in his life. We ordered a suckling pig, which is basically a baby pig, you know, that's in the prime of its life. And right when it's looking at the bigger pigs, thinking that that's how his life's going to end, they give him a fucking uppercut with a, with a sledgehammer, evidently, and end its fucking life. So you call a day before to have one of these pigs made. Um, Because it takes so goddamn long. They stick the apple in the mouth. And Bobby goes, dude, you want to come down there? It's like, dude, I don't want to eat a whole pig pig head. I don't pig head, like fucking the ears and the feet and all that bullshit. He goes, no, 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 it's the whole fucking pig. Just come, dude, dude, can you just come, dude? Dude, for me, dude. So I'm like, all right, fuck it, I'll go. So I fucking go over to this place. And they show up, and it turns out the menu, they don't have a suckling pig. They just have a pig's head for two. So Bobby orders this fucking thing. I get some sort of lamb shank. 
And in the meantime, they, they, they send over this, this – they ordered beef tongue. This is classic Bobby. Bobby's just trying to make this guy fucking puke, which I think is hilarious. But I'm sitting at the table too, and I have to eat all this shit. And I got to tell you, the beef tongue wasn't that bad because a beef tongue – the tongue of a, of, of, of a bison is like, uh, it probably looked like the tongue on Andre the Giant's shoe, you know, where it would be like fucking 16 inches long. And it's like as thick as, uh, what, are the, what are those steaks you order? A filet mignon. So they slice it up. It doesn't even look like a tongue. And it actually tastes like smoked meat. It wasn't that bad, but you just kept thinking I'm eating the tongue. So it was kind of fucking nasty. And to make matters worse, the butter that they had there was was made from duck fat. And it was the richest tasting butter. I, the first two bites, it was the best tasting butter I'd ever had in my life. And by the third bite, you know, the bread and butter, I started to feel sick. And then they bring over this goddamn bison tongue. And then after that, they followed up with a fucking pig's head. And I got to give props to Bob. Bob didn't give a fuck. He, he ate some of the nose. He ate some of the ear. He ate the fucking eyeball. Uh, it, was, it was absolutely disgusting. The dude was gagging. He didn't quite fucking puke. But uh, it was, the whole thing was fucking stupid. It's like you're trying to drag this guy out of the mud. It's like, why don't you just get him a pork chop? Did this, is this story going anywhere? All I know is afterwards I was sweating, sweating, and I uh, I got like the itis, you know, the itis that uh, Charlie Murphy and Don L. Rawlings taught me about. When you eat bad food, you get the fucking itis, which basically means about 20 minutes later, you're going to fall asleep like you just ate a Thanksgiving dinner. That's basically what happened. I tried a little bit of the pig's head. I ate actually a little bit of the pig's ear because I read a Miles Davis fucking biography one time, and he was raving about when he was a kid, when he used to get barbecue and have a pig-eared sandwich. It was fucking disgusting. And uh, I, th- I think that's all I have to say about that because I'm going to start dry heaving. Um, all right. F- fuck, you know, I-, I was loving this podcast for the first fucking eight minutes, and so now I'm-, I'm just really not liking it. Hey, how about the strike? The strike is over, everybody, and no sooner is the strike over... That a certain tub of shit started predicting what he's predicted for the last two years. And you know what? I've made a decision. I'm not falling for it this year. I'm not giving in to this Rex Ryan horse shit again. I bored a lot of people to tears. So I'm just going to let you guys know that that fat fuck can say whatever he wants. I know that it's just coming from a place of insecurity. And as a Patriots fan, I am absolutely over the moon. Excited that this fucking guy is going to talk shit again this year and just psych up other teams to be even more excited to beat them. And my prediction is that they are going to lose the exact same game that they've lost for the last two fucking years in a row. We signed a wide receiver. We're going to win the Super Bowl. I'm going to say it every year until it happens because then I'll be right. And then at the end of the year, when I lose, I'm not going to say, well, I'm a dumb fuck. I didn't know what I was talking about. I'm just going to go, you know, you guys really have no right to criticize me. Look at me. He's getting me going again. All right, I'm going to leave it at that. I'm just psyched that there's going to be an NFL season. Uh, I'm dumping my cable. I'm getting a fucking dish. I'm getting the NFL package. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm throwing down this year. I've decided. I'm ridiculously excited. And I think a lot of it had to do with the fact that I watched the NHL and the NBA Finals all the way through. And I told you, you get to the height of that excitement, and then all of a sudden it's over, and then you're just watching the dog days of summer and baseball. Like, baseball doesn't really get exciting again until September. So the fact that there was a chance that there was going to be no NFL season, um, I was really beginning to panic. Um, because the NFL, NFL is just the shit. It's the shit. You have one game a week. Every game counts. You know? Just imagine baseball. If you had one baseball game a fucking week. You wouldn't miss a game. For the entire fucking year. How You can't commit to one game. And it would mean so much more if you had like a, like a two, three game lead. I think that is the genius of NFL football. Aside from the parody. Um, 
the fact that the Jets could win it, the Patriots could win it, the Steelers could win it, the Colts could win it with old whiny Frankenstein, you know? That's Peyton Manning to me. If Frankenstein was just a whiny bitch (laughs) with a quick release, that would be Peyton Manning. Oh, Jesus, Bill, are you going to make fun of the same nine guys you made fun of last year? Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Um, Anyways, let's get into the – I got an email from abroad. Here we go. Here is an email. Um, Oh, speaking of all that shit last week as – you know, because I finally told you, you know, some of you guys where I got that lady, where I got that from. Um, I think uh, most, and I, I, I gave that link to the uh, to the Jerry Lewis video of, of the Aaron Boy. Uh, I want to thank the 99% of the people who actually enjoyed the video and could actually appreciate how far ahead of his time Jerry Lewis was. And then there was one douche who was just like, um, didn't make me laugh. Uh, it was mediocre at best. Uh, just become a critic, sir. Just become a critic. You have the exact sort of cunt tone that it takes to be a critic. That exact fucking, I've never done this, nor do I have the talent to do this. So, uh, it just was just classic. You know, as I sit here trashing Peyton Manning. Um, All right, let's plow ahead here. Email from abroad. Um, Reason, okay, Bill, the reason women don't write in as much to the podcast is because men complain more. This girl should have her own fucking radio show. That's a great way to start it. You're going to get a ton of emails, lady. That was great. Uh, We tolerate a lot of shit in this culture and only say something after after we went through and store it up a bit. Men just bitch when and where any minor annoyance occurs. the reason Isn't this fucking hilarious? Like, they look at us the exact same way that, that we look at them. You know, she thinks that we have it easier. She thinks that, she, that women have been through more, that they only bitch when it counts, and we bitch at fucking everything. I'm telling you. That's why, uh, you ever notice that when people like, like when I imitate women, you know, I always just have them go, oh my God, like they talk like that. And then you have, if you notice, like when women talk about guys or their boyfriend, they'd be like, okay, I had the whole fucking day set up. And then my boyfriend comes in. He's like, oh, why don't we put the tables over here? They always make that noise oh, before we start talking. Like we're the dumbest fucking people on the planet. See that? I'm, th- I'm starting to learn. I think that we're both annoying to each other. What do you think about that? Am I going out on a limb there? Um, anyways, Bill, the reason women probably got – what the fuck is that word? Side-led? Saddled, you mean, with nagging and complaining stereotype is because after listening to a guy bitch about something for a while, women chime in with an opinion, and the guy couldn't handle it and started whining. <laughs> this girl is hilarious unless she's serious. Uh, then she's a psycho like me. All, all comedians do is whine. Most of your material is about complaining about something, and you're even starting to get bored with complaining about women, and you whine about it. This girl is great. And, you're, and about your parents being strict and making you eat leftovers for breakfast. Your mom made breakfast for you. Your mommy made some breakfast for you. Are you really giving me shit because my mom made me breakfast when I was six? What were you making yourself a steak? Um, in my house, the only breakfast you got was Carnation Instant Breakfast. Well, your mom sucked. She was probably out blowing somebody. Um, trying, trying powering yourself up for a day at school on that. Still want to complain about your parents? I wasn't complaining about my parents. I was telling funny stories. Stop superimposing your awful childhood on me. And please tell me. This was a special Sunday morning thing and not something your mom did to you seven days a week. Seven days a week, you say, you cozy, smug cunt. I hope I spelled everything correctly and it's breezy enough for you to read. Wouldn't want you here. You complain about how hard it is for you to read an email. Oh, this girl's fucking awesome. Love you and Nia is great. Thanks for all you do. Have a blessed day. That was basically the female version of what I say, so I really can't get mad at her. Um... 
But you can't blame me for your awful fucking childhood. All right? That sounds like you had a brutal one. Were you one of those latchkey kids? I think everyone in the 70s was. Um, Carnation Instant Breakfast. Wasn't that that chocolate-flavored shit? We used to have Quick. I thought that that was the shit. Did you never get a waffle? All right, success story. Hey, Bill, I'm a 24-year-old gay guy. (coughs) Excuse me. 24-year-old gay guy who came out of the closet last February. Your what are you a fag bit on Let It Go inspired me to come out of the closet. What I took from that hilarious bit is that most people are miserable because they either don't understand or they deny themselves what would really make them happy for bullshit reasons, like you buying your pumpkin. I used to be miserable and suicidal. Now I'm performing in drag shows hosting cupcake decorating parties and sucking cock, and I'm happy as a pig in shit. Thanks, Bill. See that? You see that? The podcast isn't all negativity. It's not all wine. Well, actually, he's saying that it was my fucking, uh, my fucking, uh, my stand-up act. Well, that's great to hear that, sir, because I remember a long time ago when I was in Seattle, I did that bit up in Seattle, and I was doing the what are you a fag bit, and these gay guys stood up, screamed fucking homophobe, and they walked out because they didn't get the bit. It's nice to know that you understood it. Um, Jesus, dude, you fucking dove right in with the gayness. I just thought you were going to buy like a Paisley shirt or some shit, you know, maybe wink at somebody in a gay bar. You went, you went all fucking in. Um... Well, congratulations. Good for you. Um, let's get on with the uh, with the advice here. Advice for the week. You know, it's funny. If you came out sooner, sir, and you went to Montreal, you could have been one of the waiters or waitresses. What exactly are you supposed to say? You know, I gotta be. I gotta admit, I get a little annoyed with that. With with transvestites, when people go, well, you know, she, or when you say transsexuals. She wants to sit over here. No, he. He wants to sit over here. That guy there with the fucking jack ham shoulders. That guy. Yeah, that dude who cut his dick off and now is wearing a dress. That's still a dude. All right. He's modified. He's like a hot rod. Like he went to uh, fucking Orange County choppers. <laughs> Put some flames on the side. Um, well, or, or is that just considered being polite? Is that what it is? Um, advice. Hey, Bill, love the podcast. You were hilarious at the Greg Giraldo benefit last month. Thank you. Um, advice. Bill, I've been going... Hang on a second. I'm going to get this closer here. Bill, I've been going out with this girl. Let's say Ethel. Jesus Christ, dude. Could you pick a more fucking old lady name? I bet you did that on purpose, right? I've been going out with this girl, let's say Ethel, for about two years now, and everything was great. How many emails start this way? I was in a relationship for two years, and everything was great. Everything was great. Picking daisies and sharing spaghetti strands, so to speak. A week ago, I texted her to see if she wanted to go for lunch. She starts being a complete bitch and insults me. Wait a minute. You ask her if she wants to go out for lunch, and she starts being a complete bitch. She insults you. I suck in bed. I'm ugly. And why am I even trying to become a comedian? Because I'm not funny but with much more vivid and harsh language. She said all that to you? Then I get a text saying that it's not Ethel, but her brother texting me, and he's just messing with me. I go off on him, calling him a dumb cunt and other funny adjectives. Five minutes later, I get a call from Ethel yelling at me about being a dick to her brother for no reason. Apparently, that prick deleted all the text messages he sent except, hey, it's Ethel's brother. Dude, this guy is fucking hilarious. That's brilliant. So he so he deletes every fucking thing that he sent except for hey it's Ethel Ethel's brother and the ten texts of of me flipping out on him. Uh, I evidently he kept. I tried to explain what a ma- manipulative douche her brother is, but of course she believed him over me. After a couple of after a couple of days of her avoiding my calls and even not answering the door when I went to her house, which she does when she's mad at me. I talked to one of her friends. She eventually tells me Ethel told her once in high school that she got home drunk from a party and passed out. She woke up to her brother jerking off in her room. Ethel didn't care and just watched. 
Should I cut all interaction with her altogether because of this or let her explain herself? Thanks in advance. Dude, what the fuck? You know something? If every if that was like a script to a movie, if every movie could take a fucking hard left hand turn like that, I would go to the movies every goddamn weekend because I would never be able to guess the ending. Did anybody else see that? I thought you were just going to say, yeah, she said that she got drunk and she banged someone else. But it was right as we started going out. So does that count as cheating? She, he was jerking off in her room. Ethel didn't care and just watched. She watched her brother jerk off. Was he jerking off to her? Dude, yeah, game, set, match. That's that's a fucking, that's a deal breaker. Go buy a gift certificate, a two for one for both of them to go into therapy. That, uh, yeah, I would get the fuck out of that. Now I have, because this is like a serious thing, so I got to make sure I, I cover my ass here. I'm not a psychologist. I'm not a therapist. I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about, but my gut, all right? Don't take this any more serious than some guy you just told this story to at a bar. I, you need a, a professional to help you out with this one, but my gut's telling me that there's something fucked up, obviously, going on in their house. Uh, might have involved some sort of touching. I have no fucking idea. Maybe there's some ghost in there. Is the place fucking possessed? That reminds me of the Amityville Horror. Was that that movie where the brother and the sister hook up? One of those horror movies. Yeah, dude, get the fuck out of there. And that guy just being that... uh, At first, I just thought he was a wise ass. But the fact that he's jerking off in a room with his passed out sister, that's a dark, sadistic, fucked up dude. And the fact that she just sat there and watched... um, it sounds like if Ethel ever cheats on you, it's going to be with her brother, uh, which means uh, you're going to have to be mad at two-thirds of her family. <laughs> God. This is creepy and disgusting. Um, but wait a minute. You just got this information from her friend, but why out of all those things would she make that up? I, I would just... Yeah, dude, that's the mother of your kids. Watches her brother jerk off. Dude, that's that's just, that's that shit when you get molested and then you have no boundaries because nobody had any boundaries with you or some shit. I remember overhearing somebody say, I have no fucking idea on this one, dude. Uh, I would run, don't walk away from that situation. Go through the six weeks of the breakup pain of what did I used to do with my life. Dude, get the fuck out of that one. Get the fuck out of that one. Yeah. That's it. If you have stuff over at her house, don't even bother picking it up. Just just write that off in your taxes next year. Just uh, just leave it alone. And then, of course, she's going to call you. Um, and you're not going to pick up, and she'll just leave a message. Hey, it's Ethel. Um, haven't heard from you. In the background, you hear... Fucking boyfriend... F- Wait, not even boyfriend, a fucking brother fucking jerking off to her depressed mood. Ugh. So, you know, I know I got mad at you, but I think we should work it out. Uh, I I don't know how to get out of that one. I, I definitely would not bring up to her that you heard that she watched her brother jerk off. Um, That's the thing that's killing me about all this is it's hearsay. But how do you how do you approach that subject? How do you just listen? Uh, I heard something about you. I uh, heard you uh, you kind of uh, you you know kind of passed out. And your brother uh, took out the old meat hammer, started uh, banging some nails, and uh, you fucking sat there and watched. What the f- what the f- Fuck. Dude, I have no idea how to have that conversation. I think you just got to leave. Like De Niro in Heat. You just fucking walk away. Just walk away. And this is another thing I would do. Do not tell anybody. You know, that's some serious fucked up family shit. And uh, 
you know, if they did some shit like that, I'm guessing something horrific happened to them. And the last thing they need is that shit out in public to be ridiculed. And uh, because obviously people can't keep their mouths shut. Dude, you know what you should do? You should bang that girl that told you that story. You know, what the fuck's she giving you that information for? She obviously doesn't want you to get back with Ethel. Jesus Christ, this is like a fucking soap opera script. All right, let's plow ahead. Hiya, Bill. Uh, Podcast stand-up, love it, hilarious. Thank you. Uh, I come to you, like so many men do, asking advice about ladies and relationships. My case is a little different in that I have never had a serious girlfriend, and I really need advice on wooing a girl. Ah, oh, Jesus. I don't know if you came to, I think you came to the wrong guy on this one. I do not know how to woo a girl. I know how to be a dick, yet make her laugh, and then have her questioning why she ever got in a relationship with me. That's, that's what I know how to do. But let's plow forward. Um, I have my sights set on this girl. I want you to help me woo. I will admit, and you woo, woo, woo. I will admit that I'm a 21-year-old virgin. And think that the advice you give on those lady killers out there is pretty solid and I could use uh, some myself. The girl on my radar is is a bigger nerd than I. There you go. Go with some easy prey. Pick the weak one. Um, she's one of those who loves Japanese cartoons like Pokemon and stuff like that. Don't get me wrong. Nerdy girls are right up my alley. She's borderline cute and I and I banter back and forth with her on Facebook without any headway. Does she have those dark frame glasses, you know, and wears her hair up? But one day you're going to take them off and she lets the hair down, gives it a little tossle, like one of those makeover shows. Um, anyways, I also don't think it would hurt to mention that her parents are multimillionaires living in s- this city that I'm not going to mention, just to give it a little perspective. She's a total sweetheart and interested in dudes, but I don't ever really know how to break the ice. Okay. I'm sure I'm not the only virgin who listens into the show, and I speak on our behalf when I ask for a few good icebreakers, techniques, and ways to get our feet in the proverbial door. Excuse me, hiccups. In my case, and in general. I mean, I love hearing from guys who complain about only fucking two people a week as much as the next guy, but I think uh, us guys with dick, Dicks drier than a bucket of sand would appreciate a few good do's and don'ts. I'm thinking of dinner or drinks as a first date, or should I invite myself to her mansion to watch cartoons? Uh, Let's get some virgin bone smooched, Bill. All right. Um, All right, Jesus Christ. Wooing a girl. I don't know how to do this. Um, Do you know how I got Nia? I basically, that movie Monster came out, and she told me how great a movie it was. And I saw it, I thought it sucked, and I called her up, and I went off on it, and I had her laughing her ass off. And uh, that was basically, uh, I think that that's basically, I, don't, I, don't, I never really thought about it. I don't woo people. All right, let, let's, 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 let's look at the fucking target here. All right, she's some broad... I'm guessing she wears fucking glasses. She likes Japanese cartoons. Oh, Jesus Christ, her parents are multimillionaires. So what do you want to do here? Do you want to fucking have this girl be your girlfriend? It seems like you just want to bang her. If you want to bang her, you don't take her to dinner. Dinner and drinks. You just get right to the drinks. <laughs> um, invite her out to some shit. Some shit that you're already going to be at, all right? Some nerdy shit that she's going to like where there's going to be alcohol. That's what you do. You invite her out there. She's probably going to show up with a friend. Don't let that be an obstacle, all right? Then you go there. You just start talking shit. Just make her laugh. Say a couple things that are fucking borderline over the top. Dude, I really wish I could just mic you up for this thing because this isn't something that you're going to be able to figure out on a first date and you're really going to say something fucking stupid. But don't let that don't let it stop you. This is like learning how to do stand up. You have no fucking idea how to do it. You write five minutes of shit that you think is funny. All of a sudden you're at an open mic. They call out your name. You walk on stage and you hang on for dear life. All right. You know what? Fuck this nerd. Okay, this isn't the last fucking nerd you're going to try to bang. 
All right? This girl is, is, is practice on her. I'm not saying break her heart and treat her like shit. Just go in there and try to be fucking irreverent. Don't give a fuck. You know what? Hit on the girl she brought, too. Who knows? Maybe she's the whore of the two. I think at this point, you're 21. You want to get fucking laid. You don't need a fucking girlfriend, dude. That's it. There, there it is. Your 21-year-old version. You need to go out there and start fucking killing it. All right? Because if you, you what's going to happen with you is, is you've never gotten fucking laid. It's getting to the point where it's absolutely fucking ridiculous. I mean, you're 21 years old. That's like that year the Orioles lost like 23 games in a row. They didn't give a fuck. By the end of it, they were throwing at people's heads, right? They were probably having a circle jerk in the locker room. Anything to break the fucking... <laughs> Anything to break the bad karma, all right? So it's a 21-year-old virgin, sir. This is the best fucking advice you're ever going to get. The last thing you want to do is get into a goddamn relationship. So dinner and drinks, throw that out the fucking window. Out the window, all right? Oh, you should go to a movie. Fuck that. Fuck that. Invite her out to some nerd shit where there's some drinks, all right? I'm not saying get hammered, but get drunk. Get drunk and talk some shit. And even though you don't know how to talk shit, talk some shit that you think is talking shit. Just get your fucking feet wet. Forget about your goddamn dick. Get your fucking feet wet. Get in the game. Get some at-bats. Take some cuts, some big swings. Swing for the fences. Hit on her fucking friend, too. If you're not getting anything, hit on the girl bringing you drinks. You know what? Before you meet this broad, go out and do this shit. Just start doing this. You got to get yourself out of your fucking shell. That's what you got to do. All right? Go buy a fucking stack of goddamn condoms. All right? That's good. That's, That's good energy. You're preparing to get laid. You're setting the table. All right? And you're a 21-year-old virgin, which means your dick has no miles on it. So if you go out there and you meet some dirty fucking whore, you better make sure you wear a condom because your fucking undercarriage is going to start rusting out immediately. (laughs) That's fucking gross. All right? Look yourself in the mirror. Stop being a fucking pussy. Oh, wow, look who just walked in, the wonderful Nia. Nia, you got to help me out here. I, I'm trying to help a 21-year-old version. Version. A virgin. Virgin? Yeah, I'm still, I've been stuttering this whole podcast because I, I'm, I think that fucking Tylenol PM is still fucking with me. Um, speaking of the mic. Hi. Yeah, there you go. So this guy, he's a <laughs> 21-year-old virgin. Okay. All right. And uh, he wants to get laid. So he's been talking on Facebook with some nerd chick who's into Pokemon and all that, <laughs> yeah, Micronauts and all that shit that they're into. Right. So uh, he just can't seem to to get in the goddamn game. All right, so he's suggesting taking her to dinner and drinks, and I'm like, that's the worst thing you can do because you're going to end up in a relationship. And I'm saying he's 21 years old; he needs to go out there and crush some ass. And if he goes out, if you set it up with dinner and drinks, you take her to a movie, you're, you're setting it up like you care about her. You you don't want to be a 21 year old. Okay, you're already furring your bra. Because I don't understand why being in a relationship is like the worst thing that could happen. Right out of the gate, it's fucking horrible, especially at 21. This guy needs no. to bang. He's like most guys. He needs to bang at least 20, 40, 60. He can do that afterward. I don't understand why he can't take this girl. Why Why are you denying him his instinct to like take her out and show her a good time and laugh it up? And if they end up having sex, great. And if not, whatever. Why are you discouraging that? Because he's never been laid. Which yeah. means well, which what's, why it's more which, important which for mean, him to which be means it's, it's my the first time, time, my time. The first time should be with someone he cares about because that set up your whole sexual outlook for like the rest of your life. I think. I think your first time should be like an ideal situation. It shouldn't just be with like a whoever. That's really gay. It's not. That's how it was for me. It was very special and loving, and it, it really ah, shaped my gross. outlook. Stop saying that. Why, why is it gross? That's just fu- This guy needs to go out. He, I told him, buy a stack of fucking condoms. He needs to go out, okay? Then dress, you might as well dress, just tell him to get a hooker. It's closest. No. You might as well tell him. Well, that's, really? Well, that's kind of what you're, you're just throwing him out into the wild. Like, yeah, just bang a bunch of chicks. If that's it's not what I'm saying. Don't belittle, removed, don't belittle what I'm saying. If it's going to be that devoid and removed from emotion, then he might as well just get a hooker. No, you know what the problem is, Nia? You don't understand how guys are wired. All, All right? right? 
Well, he's wired to take a girl out and. You How do know, you know that? You don't know this because guy. Because he said it. So what? I, I say things. <laughs> I say things that so I don't mean. he said it and you don't, you don't believe him. Dude, this is like a guy who's never watched a football game talking about football. He doesn't know what the fuck he's doing. Yeah, get the ball and run with it. That's, that's his instinct. He doesn't know how to go off tackle. They just called the option. You think he's going to throw it? He's just going to start running. He doesn't know what to do. I have this, no idea what you're talking about. Exactly. And the same way you have not, you know nothing about football, this guy knows nothing about pussy. And I'm telling you right now, he's going to go out there and he's going to fucking – she's going to hold his hand or give him a little kiss. And he's going to be like, oh, oh my God. All those feelings right? are great. Yeah. Why are you just trying to discourage those feelings? Those are all wonderful because feelings to have. Because of the demon. Because of the demon. What are you talking about? The demon that every guy has in him. Okay? Not every guy is you, Bill. Every guy has that demon in him, and you got to fuck it out of you before you fall in love. You have to hit – you got to hit that – maybe I'm superimposing myself, but you got to hit the wall. (laughs) Yeah, you you think? You're you're crawling off that last skank, and you're just like, what the fuck am I doing? I I don't know why you're trying to turn him into a dirtbag. I want to meet a nice girl because, Nia, this guy is going to fall in love. Right so out of the shoot. Right out of the shoot. Without ever a, ask. Because he's going to fuck thing? with him when he's in his 40s. Uh, I have no idea what you mean by any of this. I'm going to tell you I what's going to happen. This out. is what. No. No. Follow She's going to do something. Follow your heart, sweetie. And this dude, this girl. <laughs> Take that He's nice gonna... little nerdy girl out. Talk about all kinds of nerdy stuff together. Kiss, make out, be excited about seeing her again in a couple weeks. And then it builds from there and you have wonderful, sweet love making. And if it lasts a month, if it lasts for two weeks, that's, oh, that's life. And that's how geez. it goes. That's the advice you should be giving him. Is to go for it, and if things don't work out, know that you will find. And you know what's else. funny? You know what's funny? That's the, the, the advice, advice you should the give. The advice him. that you're giving him mm-hmm. is, in his forties, he's going to have a Corvette convertible, and his comb over is going to be fucking blowing in the breeze as he try as he drives down the street banging. No, his fucking I think secretary. he's going to be just fine. I oh, think you, he should you take think her so? out. Yeah. And like I said, if it doesn't work out with this girl for some reason, you will find somebody else. But you got to get out there and get in the game. All right, there you go, sir. You got it from both sides of the ball there. Um, <laughs> I'm just looking out for this guy because I, I really – this guy is, you know, he's leading with his jugular and he's going to get hurt. I'm telling you. you I'm telling you, dude, you got to hurt them before they fucking hurt you. Yeah, that's right? really what it comes down to. <laughs> that's really what it comes down to. I'm really, now, see, this is why you're great on the podcast. I, you know, as, you, as always, Nia, you wouldn't believe this. I've actually been trashing broads on this thing. But this, I, I wish you were here for this. This fucking lady wrote a hilarious email, called me out and comedians out on all our shit that we're just a bunch of whiny bitches bitching about stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was pretty much dead on. That's great. <laughs> pretty much dead on. Yeah, um, yeah. But you know what? She didn't ruin. She didn't ruin my. Uh, she didn't ruin my high for this week. Okay. I'm I'm feeling pretty good. You should. Yeah, you think so? Because of the uh, that whole Breaking Bad episode, yeah, they they cut it together very nicely. Breaking Bad. Well, yeah. I mean, yeah. Bring me back down to earth, Nia. <laughs> Make sure I don't have an ego. Just trash me. You stunk on it. <laughs> <laughs> you and your big fat red face. Ah, uh, huh? Jesus. She was trashing me last night. See, we were trying to recreate With it. With your we rusty beard. Yeah, we were trying to recreate it last <laughs> night. I was sitting there going, that guy actually came up pretty good. And after a while, she just started trashing me. It was fucking hilarious. She but brought, you were you, great. You brought me back down. Or, you know, no, I'll tell you, you know what was great? You was, were really was good. the editing. The editing on that was so fucking slick. Yeah. That uh, it made me look way better. The coolest thing of that of that scene, the thing that made that scene cool was the fucking editing. And I'm telling you, yeah. for any anybody out there. If you people don't watch Breaking Bad, aside from that uh, world-famous comedian Bill Burr, Bill Burr <laughs> is on it, then <laughs> you should just watch it because it's a great show. The acting is amazing. Everybody involved is a genius. Yeah, but – Thank God for for great editors. That's all I can say. <laughs> at the end of the day, I was still a comedian acting. <laughs> but to you be or not to be? <laughs> is that what the question is? <laughs> um, 
You're you a, know what you're the a, hardest You're a legitimate thing is? actor in the, Hollywood the, now. The uh, oh yeah, because yeah. with that and with date night, I think date I'm, up, night. <laughs> I'm up to, I'm up to about eleven lines that I've delivered on camera. Well, I, think that's I mean, the, I, I feel like the things that you've been in have been quality, so it's not like you know. Well, you know, a lot of people, you know, when they look at my IMDb page and they say how they see how <laughs> like sp- they do sparsely. <laughs> Sparsely furnished it is. They think it's because I don't book a lot of acting roles. It's that I, I, I seriously I turned down a tremendous, <laughs> tremendous amount of work. I remember. Yes, your uh, work on Passionata yeah. was. Um... Oh yeah, that was one. That was one. I did. I did them a favor. They said, "Please come in here and be guy who plays poker next to Star." And I just remembered, you know. If if that guy who was starring in it wasn't starring in it, I wouldn't have done it because I didn't connect <laughs> with those four lines. I just you know I really have to connect with the material. Sure, man. weren't that's, you that's a basic. jogger on an, uh, a Law and Order episode as well? Indeed, I was. <laughs> and one of the keys to that performance <laughs> was that I did a lot of jogging and running when I was a kid. <laughs> And a lot of actors made the mistake of just walking into the audition. Sure. But I came in in character. Did you? I, I jogged you in. You jogged I in. jogged right in. And that the whole it. time I was jogging in place. Like when they were just saying, hey, you know, what's your name? Slate your name. Slate your name. And I was, I was already jogging because I wanted to be like sweating for the performance. And, sure. I, and it, it's those kinds of things. Dick Wolf must have been like this guy. Oh, yeah. more like, method than Brando. Yeah. Like it's those kinds. I revel. In those four line acting pieces that I did, do. you have lines on Law and Order? Oh, indeed, I did. Can someone please, for the love of God, find footage of Bill playing the jogger on Law and Order? What my, year was my it? My grandmother actually <laughs> trashed me when she saw that. She made fun of my lines. Are you feeding the fishies? Are you feeding the fishies all night? And then she went ah ha and hung up on the phone. Wow, is that where you get it from? Yeah. <laughs> What? I told you, my mom, the first time I did Conan, I had my shirt untucked, and it was like right around, you know, mid-90s, so that grunge look. Mm-hmm. Guys to this day still have the untucked, you know, button-down shirt, mm-hmm. and my mother was just like, um, uh, that was my first, you know, late-night show I did, and I thought it went pretty well, and then she, what did she say? She said, you should tuck your shirt in next time. You look like you were wearing a dress. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> so, Thanks, mom. So the next time I go on it, I wear a suit. Uh-huh. I wear a suit, and then she goes uh, – I go, hey, you know, what would you think? And she goes, you, you shouldn't do any more short sets. You're, you're, you're much better when oh it's longer. God. Yeah. So I finally talked to her. I was just like, like – my mother. I was like, why, why can't you just – She's never satisfied. <laughs> yeah. I was like, why can't you just say good job? And then her philosophy is I'm not criticizing you. I'm just trying to make it better. Wow. There you go. What year did you do Law & Order? So we can help the people um, out. Early 2000s. Okay. Uh, wait, yeah. I remember. It was March of 2001 because March 2001. We, okay. we filmed it across under the Brooklyn Bridge and the, the Twin Towers. It was within you know six months of them going. That was right around six months, and they had the, the, the lights shining up mm-hmm. where the Twin Towers were. And I think – did they have wait, that wait, in the Wait, wait. So scene? it was March of 2001 or this was post Ma- March. I'm sorry. March of 2002. 2000, okay, 2002. Okay. March 2002. People – Find that episode. Find that episode. March 2002, Law and Order. And here, here's – yes. From – you could actually I'm, – I'm putting together – And it was the a, New York a, one, so. I'm actually putting together a uh, seven-minute reel of the 50 acting performances that I've done. You can jam <laughs> okay. them. You can yeah. jam them all in a seven-minute. <laughs> Paging Mr. Herman. Mr. Herman. You have, you a, have a phone call, call at the, the front, front desk. desk. Yes. Um, oh, we're nerding out a little bit. We are. Speaking hey, of you know, nerd love, oh, nerd love. What, oh. You're going to deny this kid what, what we kind of went through? Look, I have to make it funny. Whatever. Do whatever the fuck you want to do. All I'm saying is, you know what? You might be right on this one. Mm-hmm. I'm bringing all my fucking fears in this because uh, how my whole dating life started. Right. Yeah. He's, you know? He, he could have I a was really 19, awesome fun I was, life. I was like 19, 20 before I finally got any. You know? Mm-hmm. And I was she, 19. She was she was in her 30s and sang in a band. <laughs> I, I just went right. I went right into it. There's nothing I better than having zero to to fucking a buck ninety. <laughs> I was hanging on for dear life. 
there's nothing better than your first time being a really nice time. Because like I said, even if it doesn't work out, you don't have that kind of you know thing what? hanging over you. You that, know what? Like that first time was nothing. I, mean, you know, it's, I like, tap out. You're yeah. 100% right. The reason yeah. why I'm probably so fucked up is because I didn't go after some nice girl. Okay? Yeah. I went out. I went after damaged goods. I was like some cheap fuck, you know, at the grocery store who tries to find like a dented can, <laughs> you know, or some, <laughs> some cereal box that has some water damage because it's cheaper. <laughs> Those were the kinds of women that I went after in the beginning. I went after damaged fucking goods. Uh, I liked them a little hoary. You still I like them a little hoary. Like, they, look at you, trashing yourself. <laughs> I, no, I did. I, I came right out of the gate. And uh, no, I had a rough, I had a rough period there. And then when I would, I would get with nice girls, they didn't turn me on on any level. I had the classic whore Madonna thing. Like yeah. nice girls, I didn't want to bang them. I was like, I don't want to bang you. I want to take you to a movie. Then I get with a whorey girl. It's like, I'm not taking any of the movies. Blow me. Right. But the thing is, if you take a nice girl to a movie and do nice things with her, she will eventually want to sleep with you. And then she could turn yeah, out to be just... a total whore in bed, which is like the best of both worlds. I know. I never really thought about that. I was just, I just pictured it being nice, having nice sex. <laughs> This is nice. We're having sex. Isn't you don't. This nice? You never know what somebody is capable of until you put them in the situation. So, Jesus Christ! You know, I gave you fucking props after night trashed women about you know, the way you handled the dog this morning. Yeah, as you flipped out. <laughs> oh, I went into Mike Ditka mode. <laughs> Cleo, knock it off! <laughs> Fuck! I swear to God, I'm ready to get rid of that goddamn dog. <laughs> Well, what about you? You fucking let the dog go for like an hour. I have to keep getting up like it's just my dog. And then I finally said to you, you know, it's your dog too. I know, but Phil, also you need to realize that when you are not here, if I sleep till like 10, she's in there and she she deals with oh, it. Oh, you know what, Nia? So go F know. yourself. I don't know what to tell you. No, but I went over there. No, I you keep doing, I keep doing this shit. You keep saying the dog's fucked up because of me. Like it's always me. It's not always you. You're right. But no, I went over there and I gave her the old pressure and then she kind of calmed down. Yeah, you know what? Sometimes you just you have really, to ignore really her, just, though. Really just an, you know but what? Sometimes, sometimes I should just, just wants... ignore you. How about that? You're always coming you at me. You could never, never ignore me. Really? All what right. other I'm advice is going overrated, on? Overrated, underrated. Oh, let's do that. Those are fun. This is me ignoring you. Oh. Because you don't, you don't get to chime in. <laughs> overrated, underrated. Overrated. Wet t-shirt competitions. <laughs> For some reason, the fact that you can kind of see a woman's titty through a soaking wet T-shirt seems to cause us men to flock by the hundreds just to come see. Never mind the women in that situation. Shit, like that really cheapens us as a sex. Uh, why not just go out to a titty bar like a real man? Plus, a titty dancer has more dignity. At least she's making good money out out of the consequences of her fucked up childhood. The rest of them are freezing their tits off in a field in front of... Some seedy old fuck with a hose. Oh, I see. Seedy old fuck. That's guy spraying the titties. Overrated. Chicks with big boobs. Usually, usually they have back problems. Complain when you, when you tweak their nips and are generally thicker, harder to toss around. What? Give, give me a B-cup skinny spinner any day of the week built for speed. How is somebody's back problems your issue, you douchebag? Because they're going to sit and there and whine about it. And what girl likes you to tweak their nipples? Hey, FYI, douche. <laughs> it's annoying and it hurts when you tweak nipples. They're sensitive, you dumbass. You can't tweak their nipples. I mean, what the fuck? <laughs> Idiot. <laughs> All right, so we know how Nia feels on that one. All right, underrated. Girls' boobs, it's, it's, I take it on, it's my issue. You know, go fuck yourself. This is another woman's body. <laughs> And it's underrated or overrated. Girls with big boobs are overrated. I mean, you know how it affects me? You yeah. dumbass. Those boobs fed you for probably longer than you needed to, you little mama's boy. Now you have a boob complex. <laughs> Let me tell you something else about a woman's body that I know nothing about. You know what? Sit down somewhere. Play with your micro-inch penis. That really annoyed me. Jesus Christ. <laughs> what did I tweak your nipple or something recently? You really went off. Um, all right. Give me a B cup skinny girl any day. Ugh. That, I actually, you know, I love the B cups the best. 
As if you, if you go in like long term, those those other ones are just going to be fucking sitting in her lap after a while, and she's want to get want to get a boob reduction. Bill, you shut know? your fucking mouth. What? You it's know true. nothing. What do you mean I know nothing? You know nothing. Really? Those big ones don't end up fucking hanging below your knees? They all end up getting saggy. Yeah. News flash. They I know all that. end up I know, saggy. But, but the, Most the, women the, of a certain age, if they appear perkier than whatever, they're wearing a bra because gravity happens. It happens to your fucking pink sack. <laughs> and it happens to boobs. Get over it. Yeah, but the, the big fucking... The you think big, I'm looking forward to looking at your 80-year-old balls? I'm not. Am I criticizing your titties? I'm not. Am I criticizing your titties? No, you're not, but I'm just, you know. <laughs> I'm gonna, I don't give a fuck how much you trash me. I know I'm a mess. Those big titties <laughs> end up down in your fucking lap. They have a shelf life to them. They do. And if, they, if those broads go to sleep without a bra on, forget about it. They're hanging off the side of the bed <laughs> like you drooled off your pillow. No one really sleeps in the bra. That sounds like the most uncomfortable. Maybe some girls do. It's right. You know what? I, you know what? The reason why you balance this podcast is you fucking defend women no matter what, That's even right. if they're in the wrong with their big titties. <laughs> um, underrated. Uh, Gene Hackman. Here's a guy who who, uh, who knew how to walk away. I know he gets a shitload of praise already for his acting, but this guy had the discipline to pick up to pick a retirement date to such a b- bizarre career choice and then stick to it. I didn't even know he retired. Not to mention he's probably been tempted to come back hundreds of times by movie studios. I bet when the producers of last, the last Superman movie called him about reprising his Lex Luthor role, he probably just said, fuck you, I'm going fishing, and hung up the phone. That's fuck it. That's a great underrated. I didn't know he did that. Do you know that's my dream? To turn down a Superman uh, no. franchise? <laughs> no, I want to I, to to retire. Mm-hmm. To actually not be on stage, eighty years old with my ball bag hanging down <laughs> my tuxedo <laughs> pant leg. Oh, I'll tell you these comics today. They don't know how to go. What's up with that? What's up with that? Do you right? think you'll ever retire? Do you think you'll like? I'm or are you gonna? Are you gonna George Burns it? Um, I want to George Carlin it. Mm. Put out a special, and then that's it. Yeah. That's yeah. That's what <laughs> I want to do. Okay. I want to. I want to be up there, that guy who like walks in really slowly to the theater, and then the second he goes on stage, it's like, it's like he's in his twenties again. <laughs> Lady. <laughs> no, I would like to. Um, yeah, you'll never. I never. I don't see you retiring. I. It's. I have to do it. Yeah. That's the thing. Yeah. I have to do it. If I don't do it, you know, it's like when I, if I don't do stand up for three, four days, I'm driving you nuts. Yeah. I have to go down there. And be able to yell at people when they don't get to talk to me. <laughs> you get spoiled by That's it. why you do it. <laughs> Actually, exactly. That's a great way of describing Stan. People out there, all of you out there who just feel like you're not being heard, that's the greatest thing about doing stand-up. You get to talk for an hour and everybody else has to shut the fuck up. And if they open their mouths, you get to tell them to go fuck themselves. And then a whole room full of people applauds you. It's tremendous. It's like, like I can't even explain how awesome that is. And uh, I highly recommend it. But there is a price to pay. All right. Underrated. Joe what is that price? What is the price? Um, the loneliness, the travel, yeah. the, the alcoholism, the drug use, <laughs> the whores, the scumbag club owners who fuck you on the money, uh, learning how to do stand-up, standing there getting heckled. The humiliation, Jesus Christ, it's a fucking laundry list. But at the end of it, if you make it through, your reward is you get a microphone and you get to yell at people for an hour. And get paid for it. Oh, they cheer you on. Yeah! I feel that way too. If I did what I did on stage anywhere else, people would be telling me to shut the fuck up. They really would. (laughs) Jesus, enough already. Can I talk now, you know? (laughs) All right, underrated. Joe DeRosa. The, hey, the Joey Idol. Roses. Joey Roses. <laughs> Joey Roses, the Teen Idol sensation from the Opie and Anthony program. Uh, I first met him after I bought your Let It Go DVD. Uh, when somebody told me about the uninformed shows you, uh, you guys did for XM, I checked it out. And not long after it, I ended up buying Joe's CD as well. Great to see his career progressing, and I hope he gets bigger and bigger because he deserves it. When you guys get into a real heated debate, 
uh, with one another. It's fucking hilarious. I was wondering if you guys plan on doing any more uninformed podcast shows. We're definitely going to do it at some point when the technology is there where you know we can like Skype and, and I don't know, somehow be in the same studio without having, having to have our own fucking studio. We're going to try and figure it out. The problem is is I've gotten really busy, Joe's gotten really busy, and we live 3,000 miles away from each other. So, um, yes, at some point we will do the Uninformed Show. Remember that? The Uninformed Show. I do. No yeah. reading, no research, just strong opinions. Yeah. What a great hook. And you guys did Who that. came up with that? Huh? You did. I did. Yes, you did. All right, underrated. Chicks with big noses. <laughs> um, usually better orally. Uh, wow, really? As they can go to the base with less air. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. If your nose is bigger, yeah. you can deep throat because – but I thought if your nose was bigger, it would get in the way. So how is Get it... in the way of what? Unless she, she's doing a 69 you, like... and she would smother herself in your ball bag. I – okay. I'll I, like have to, I'll have ju- to... I like how you just mind that, trying <laughs> to figure that out. Like would the... I did. I used the microphone to try to yeah. see Christ. how that Come would on, work. Yeah. People think you're a lady. Um, Lady. All right. Almost like the okay. Uh, almost like the the nose is a camel's hump holding reserves. Um, that's a hilarious. How the guy thinks the nose is holding the air. It's the lungs. <laughs> it can take it. <laughs> it's more. I would compare it like putting a blower onto a fucking muscle car. Right. I think that that's what. I think that that should have been the reference. Uh, anyways, that's why your balls are in a sack. You can move them. <laughs> To one. to one side so they don't get <laughs> pecked to death. How I'll, funny are my listeners? I'll have to take their Everybody word for was it. fucking hilarious That's this week. Funny. And uh, that that lady, an email from abroad. Look at her. Other women out there. She fucking totally, because I didn't read this beforehand, she fucking totally punched me in the chest and I had to sit there and take it. More women should write in. Yes, you should. All right? Get out of the kitchen oh, and start God. making emails. <laughs> Make an email. Start writing <laughs> <Any> emails. emails. <laughs> that really killed the momentum of that. Um, you should have more. Uh, you should listen to my rant about about, about a stay at stay at home moms. Why you you guys should stay at home? Just watching what you did, your natural instincts with with Cleo, how you calmed it down, and then it was totally chill. And I was doing the typical thing, you know, like if a kid's, you know, like when I when I sucked in school in high school. Mm-hmm. This is how my dad would motivate me. I would be sitting there watching TV, and he would just walk in the room and scream, Study! <laughs> or he'd go, <laughs> Hit the box! <laughs> and then I'd have to turn off the TV and go upstairs, totally angry at him, resenting him, and then sit down and read like a science book. And yeah, all I was thinking of doing was slamming it over his head. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so what were you saying? That, yeah, that, you know, that... You guys just naturally have that instinct. You should not be in the workforce. You guys. Why should... not? Because you're wasting that talent. It's like you have this unbelievable talent to raise kids, and now you got to drop them off at some snot-nosed fucking. Well, uh... we have other talents besides child rearing. So, is what, it what... possible that we can do both? <gasps> what? Do both? Oh, Jesus Christ! I've never wanted to fucking smash you <laughs> with a windscreen before in my life. Why? Because what, I'm what, speaking what, the what, truth. What, what, you're not. You guys, you know what you guys have become? You've become men. You're distant from your fucking kids. What's more important than raising a kid right? Exactly. No, now you're, exactly. you're spending eight hours of the day. I'm not saying you got to give up on your dreams of being nationally known for needlepoint. I'm not saying that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that, you know, those early years... You should be home. And I would want to be home with my kids the first few Why years. wouldn't you? If sure. you're any sort of a mother, why wouldn't you? Well, because some women have to work, Bill. Some women don't have the I option know. of staying I'm home. I'm not giving them shit that they have to work. I'm just, you know, if you suggest that women should stay home with kids, they look at you like you're, you're, you're some caveman. Well, because, because it's probably because back in the day that was what was expected. That's all you do. That's all you're good for. So it brings back those those feelings. Nah, you know you what it was. Feel like I can I nah. can do both. I can take care of my children and I can have a career and I can provide for my family. We want to feel like we can do it all, and it's it's harder and harder you to can't. do that. And yes, there's a certain wave of Something feminism that has, has to hurt s- a woman's ability to sort of naturally follow her instinct because she feels like she's not living up to her full potential. 
I know. And but, the, the amount of people who just end up in cubicles, that's my thing. I'm not saying that if you, you're going to run your own business and that type of thing. But honestly, to just go out into the workforce and become another drone. Do you ever wonder why that comic Dilbert is so fucking popular? It's because of the amount of people who fucking relate to that, that the bizarre corporate fucking world that makes no goddamn sense, that is not – fulfilling spiritually on any level. That's what you signed up for. That's what most guys were doing. I blame guys earlier in, in this that we always come home, we always got to exaggerate what we're doing, acting like it was bigger than what it actually is. And I think you guys got a false sense of what going out into the workforce was. You didn't realize that most people were just going out there, dump, dump, da, ba, da, ba, da, ba, ba, standing on the end of a fucking assembly line. I don't think women were that naive to think that. Yeah, you had your faces in like fucking. You were so making amazing. oatmeal cookies. You didn't know what was going on. There was no internet. There was no Oprah. There was none of that shit. You had I love Lucy. <laughs> Whoa, yeah. Maggie. Yeah, that's all you had. You didn't know what was going on. The only, especially way back in the day, you go back to like women's suffrage that happened, I think, in the 1700s. When you went back to um, nothing, you don't remember that. When was women's suffrage? When did you broads finally get the right to vote? Like 1920. I think it was part of that I don't know. Babe Ruth going to the Yankees deal. I think that was another way the Red Sox <laughs> fucked up. But your version of what went on in, in, in the world all came from your fucking husband. When he came home and he tried he, – you know, he bought some $2 cigar and started chomping on it, acting like it was a Cuban. I think you're underestimating women's awareness of the real world back in the day. I think you're underestimating the lack of technology that existed back then. It, you don't need technology to understand how the world works. Really? Yes, really. People have been okay, doing so it for thousands so of years. So you don't have a TV. You don't have a fucking radio. And so what? You thought women were just in a bubble? Like, I have no idea. You're like, at the, I'm you're just, at in, the a, I'm just at, in a house you're, you're making at, cookies and, like, you're at the end of feeding a, children. You're at the end of a country road. I'm talking about these broads in the middle of nowhere who were, like, barefoot until they were 31. And the one day, the, the half-Indian guy who the white people let hang around made her some moccasins. It was like the happiest day of her life. <laughs> Talking about her. She had no idea what it was like. Your version of history is hilarious. Down yeah. at the mill. Well, I'm sure there's My version of, of history. I watch women, the History but... Channel all the time. Thank you very much. Why don't you actually talk to your mother, who is of that generation no, she and wasn't. who's from a small town? She wasn't. My mother was. Mean? My mother didn't have the right to vote. Well, no, I don't mean I'm that. Talking about I just the beginning. Mean, like, but, I mean, back in the days when she was younger and, and that sort of thing, she might be able to offer a better You know what it is? I just find so us. many of the things that you guys talk about to be so childish and frivolous. Isn't that, that interesting? That I have we such feel the exact same a way. difficult time taking you seriously. That, yeah. is, that has been one of the biggest challenges Likewise. of this relationship is yeah. when I look at you to not see you as the <laughs> child that you are. And I have to keep reminding myself that you actually are an adult. That's well, one of the hardest things. You are an old man, <laughs> and I've thought that from the beginning. You're an old, out of touch, oh, red beard. You know what? You, you went to the red beard well too many times. Once again, you killed on the podcast. You really saved me. I was, uh, I had the Tylenol PMDTs. <laughs> I started off fast, <laughs> and then in the middle, I was talking about eating a pig's head, and I couldn't even make it funny. So thank you for coming on here, Nia. Anytime. We appreciate it. And I want to thank all the ladies who are going to take what I said seriously and send me a bunch of fucking emails. <laughs> um, if you would break balls like this fucking lady did here, it was, was tremendous. You really should read this, Nia. I will. You know? I bet oh, it's will good. You? Yeah. Yeah, I bet it's good. Well, you should think it's good. I said it was. Oh, God. All right. I think it's time to shut your mic off. This is another thing I wish I could do in real life. Just turn <laughs> people's mics down. Like, that's enough for you. Bye. See you later. I'm just joking. You could stay until the end of the oh. podcast. I oh, just okay. felt bad. All right. I, I just felt bad. Oh, see? You have, your, you have your moments. You're such a Gemini. You're oh. sweet, and then you're sour. All right. That's, this is getting weird. All right. That's the podcast <laughs> this week, you guys. Go fuck yourselves. Don't take any shit. Hey, a 21-year-old virgin, you got to let us know. You got to let us know when you yeah, get laid. Yeah, let us know. That, come on. This this will be this will be a uh, the Use story. Use protection for the love of God. I always tell people that. That's why I told them, buy a stack of condoms. Yeah, and check with her. Make sure she's yeah. all right, too. Don't get sucked into a fucking relationship, all right, just because you're excited <laughs> for the first fucking time. Tell him to follow his heart, but don't be stupid. Say that. You know what? Listen to this podcast. Figure out who's the least damaged out of the two of us. I think I might win this I one. I think that's pretty obvious. <laughs> <laughs> Just figure out who you want to be. All right? That's it. That's the podcast. Go fuck yourselves. I'll talk to you next week. Coffee.